Okay, so just like last week, uh, I'm going to start by just giving you a chance to check over some answers, and then I'm going to work out and explain problems. All right, so here's 1 through 4, 5 through 8, 9 and 10, 11 and 12, 14 and 15, 16, 17 and 18, 19 and 20, 21 through 24. All right, so let's go back through and talk about some of these. Um, so questions one through four is where we're solving and rearranging for the variable. So in question one, um, they're asking us to solve for x. So notice that I circled x. Uh, this negative two is attached to the x by multiplication. It's, it's always got to be the last thing that we get rid of, anything that's attached by multiplication. So I'm going to get rid of this one, which I did by subtracting one. Because one does not subtract from v or w, I just have v minus 3w equals, or sorry, minus one. Right, notice I'm not combining those. And then I'm ready to divide by negative 2 on both sides. So that leaves my answer v minus 3w minus 1 all over negative 2. All right, question 2. Uh, that one has a fraction in it, so we are going to need to get rid of the fraction first. So the first thing I did was multiply both sides by 4y. On the right here, the 4y is canceled, and I was just left with 1 minus 2x. On the left, when I multiply by 4y, I get 4yz. So remember, everything bumped together just means multiplication. And then I'm trying to get x by itself, so I decided I needed to move that positive 1 by subtracting 1 to the other side. And then I needed to divide by negative 2, which is where I'm getting this final answer here. So I divided everything on this left side by negative 2. Question 3 just like question two, we have to get rid of the fraction first, so I'm going to multiply everything by five. Notice I multiplied every single thing, um, including each term on the right side, right? These are two different terms, so I got 20r plus 5d. And then on the left, um, remember the five's canceled, so you're just left with 3a. And then this is three times a, so to get a by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by three. Question four, I'm trying to get A by itself. Remember, you may still want to be circling that to make it easier. The two and the A are connected with multiplication, so it's the last thing I'm allowed to deal with. So I'm going to get rid of this minus one. I did that by adding one to both sides. So notice this right side became P minus 2N plus one. Then I need to undo this multiplication, and I'm going to do that by dividing. So I divide both sides completely by 2. So I divide this whole side by 2, which is why I write it like all over 2. All right, questions 5 uh, is where we're going to start with our inequalities. Remember, there are two rules for inequalities. If you divide or multiply by a negative number, it flips the sign, and your answer has to end on the left side. Okay, so um, the first thing I did was distribute my 5. Then I added 15 to both sides and got negative 20. Now when I divide by a negative 30 here, remember I'm dividing by a negative number. The number on the bottom is negative. So because that is dividing, I had to flip my sign around. So that gives me n is less than 4. And because that's strictly less than, I ended up doing an open circle. And then less means I shade to the left. So open circles, remember, those happen when you have greater than or less than. All right, question six. Uh, again, I started by distributing. Anytime we have parentheses, that's where we have to start. I then combined like terms to get to 13r, and I did a few steps at once. So I combined like terms, and I also subtracted this 3 to the other side. Then I'm going to divide by 13, which gives me 7. I promise I'm going to give you numbers that you can do very easily without a calculator tomorrow. And now remember the rule, the R has to end on the left side. 
So I have to write this backwards, right? I have to rewrite this so that R isn't where it's supposed to be. So when I read that now, it should say R is greater than or equal to 7. The equal to is what tells me that I need to do um, a solid or a, we haven't said solid, we said closed, a closed circle. And then it's greater, so that's how I knew to shade to the right. All right, question seven. Again, started with distributing. I combined like terms, so 4 plus 14 gives, gave me 18. Um, I subtracted the 18 to get 9, and then I added the 4x to get negative 3x. All of that's just simple algebra. Um, remember when you divide by a negative number, so here it's going to happen again. I'm dividing by a negative number, which means this symbol has to flip around. That's why it was less than and it became greater than. The greater than or equal to is what tells me to do the closed circle. So it's the equal to that tells me to do closed, and then the greater than tells me to shade to the right. Question eight. Again, start with distributive property. Just because I'm distributing a negative number isn't going to flip the sign around. It's only if you multiply both sides, like maybe you would with a fraction, all right? Um, I noticed that I had negative 7p and positive 7p on the same side, which cancel each other out. So I just left with negative 42. Then I added 34 to both sides and got negative 8. And then I divided both sides by 2 to get negative 4. Now this is a positive number that I'm dividing by. So notice the symbol does not flip around. It stays the same direction. The reason I did have to turn everything around is because I needed p to end on the left side. So I read it backwards so that it would now say p is greater than negative 4. Because there's no equal sign, I have to do an open circle. And then greater means I shade to the right. Okay, we've got two more like that before we dive into word problems. So on question 9, the first thing I did... Um, combined like terms. This is negative 8 and negative 1, which gives me negative 9m. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 9. Um, since I'm dividing by a negative number, I had to flip this symbol around. So that, be that becomes um, less than. And then I need my uh, variable to end on the left side. So I read it backwards so that it said m was greater than or equal to negative 1. Again, the equal to is what tells me to do the closed circle, and then greater than tells me to shade to the right. Question 10, I know I fixed this for first, or sorry, for fourth period. I don't think I fixed it for second period. I don't think I noticed it yet for you all. Um, so this one was kind of weird because you had a fraction distributing to a fraction. So what I did was I fixed that for you. I will not give you a fraction distributing to a fraction. You might have one that has 3 over 2 on the outside, but I promise I will not put an extra fraction on the inside of the parentheses because we haven't spent a lot of time working on that. Okay, so if this then at the top is our original problem, the first thing I did was I multiplied everything by 8 because it's the greatest denominator. That means I'm going to multiply every single term by 8. Okay, so I got 16x. Um, on this 3 over 8 times 8, the 8's canceled, so that's plus 3. For this term right here, that's the same as getting 24 over 2x. And then on this term, I got 72 over 4 plus 8x. Now, the way that I got from those fractions to these answers is just 24 divided by 2 is 12. And 72 divided by 4 is 18. Again, I'm not going to give you, I'm going to try my best not to give you something that's 72 divided by 4. It will be easy things like 24 divided by 2, things that you should know without a calculator. All right, so once you get rid of the fractions, now we're back into like some normal um, algebra. So I went ahead and combined like terms on this right-hand side to get 20x. And I'm doing two things at once. So just listen if you're getting confused. I subtracted 16x from both sides to give me 4x. And then I subtracted 18 from both sides to give me negative 15 on the left. 
Then I'm going to need to divide both sides by 4, which I did, and negative 15 doesn't divide by 4, so I just get negative 15 over 4. And then I need my variable to end on the left, so I had to read it backwards. So now it should say x is less than negative 15 over 4. If I ask you to graph that, honestly, I'm probably not going to give you a number line tomorrow. I'll just give you, have you draw like a blank line and put negative 15 over 4 somewhere on that. Um, that is very close to negative 4, though, because right, negative 16 divided by 4 is negative 4. So less than means open circle because there's no equal to, and less means I need to go to the left when I'm shading. All right. Let's dig into some word problems. So remember when we talk about word problems, there are two different types. Either you can have um, multiple things that come together to make a total. So that would be like blank plus blank equals a total. Or we're going to have two things that we're generally are going to say are the same. Um, so that would be like blank equals blank. right? So let's dig into some of these word problems. Remember, you need to know some of your keywords. Um, so question 11, it says the original price of an item plus the sales tax of 8.5%. So that is the original price. I'm adding the original plus the sales tax. So the original is just X, which I defined. Notice that that's part of the answer. I defined X to be the original price. And then the sales tax, remember, percent, two things. You have to move the decimal twice. That's where I get 0.085. And percents mean multiplication, so you have to multiply it by something, so that's 0.085x. All right, question 12. So I started by drawing two blanks, one for the cost of the pins and one for the cost of the folders. I know the least amount about the pins, so I'm going to call x the cost of a pin. So I've got six pins, so that's just 6x. I have three folders, so that's going to be three times however much a folder is. It says a folder is 1.5 more, or sorry, $1.15 more than a pin. So I still have to count the cost of the pin, but I need to add $1.15 to that. So X plus 115 is how much a folder is, and then there are three of those. So I did three times that entire amount, okay? We skipped question 13. It reads funny, and it, that's not something we've actually learned how to do yet, so we'll come back to a question like that later on. Notice the directions. So I didn't say this earlier, but notice the directions on questions 14 and 15. So the directions for questions 14 and 15 say write an equation. So equation tells me I'm going to need an equal sign in my final answer. All right, so if I look at 14 here, it says, he son bought three skirts for S dollars and a jacket. So I went ahead and wrote two blanks, a blank for skirts and a blank for jackets. And I knew the total was 280. So that's how I knew to set this up, blank plus blank equals 280. Three skirts for S dollars. So it tells me S is the cost of a skirt, and she bought three of them. So that's three times S. Then it says she bought a jacket, so just one jacket, but that jacket is five times the cost of a skirt. Remember, the cost of a skirt is just S, so that's 5S. I think I told one or two of you maybe that incorrectly during class, um, during second period, so check and make sure that we have the same thing for question 14. Question 15. So this is a, this is a different example um, in the way we set it up because it says, notice in the words, it says, when will they have the same? That's how I knew to set this up blank equals blank. Now we're going to be looking for our rate words. So Celia consumes 1,200 calories and is going to increase that by 100 each day. I'm going to... I know that this says a day, and sometimes that confuses people, so I'm going to make sure you don't have double rate words when you read tomorrow. Um, so this says 1,200 calories and will increase by 100 each day. So that's going to be plus 100x. So remember that rate word is each here, right? Um, so that is what tells me where my variable goes. Also with that, 
we need to say what X stands for. And X stands for the number of days because each tells us the variable and the word right after tells us what it stands for. And then Ryan, so same idea, Ryan consumes 32, um, 30, and will decrease, so I did minus 190 each day, so 190x. All right, question 16. We're nearing the end of some of our word problems. So question 16. There are three people, Miss Williams, blank, her husband, blank, and her brother, blank. Together, they equal um, 15. So I'm going to say equal 15. Uh, Miss Williams has completed the same number as her husband. So we don't know anything about Miss Williams or her husband other than the, that they are the same. So we're going to call both of them X. In the last blank, we have to talk about her brother. So it says her brother has completed five less semesters than her. So I have to start with what she completed, which is X, and then subtract five from that. If you just try to write negative five here for her brother, you're going to say that he's completed negative five semesters, which doesn't make any sense, okay? Uh, again, the variable is defined, x equals uh, the number of semesters that Miss Williams or her husband, however you want to say that, completed. And it doesn't matter there who you're talking about because we both have the same. All right. When we talk about 17 and 18, the biggest thing I want to point out to you are, again, the directions. It says write an inequality, which tells you you cannot put an equal sign. You have to put an inequality symbol. So look out for those rate words um, or keywords, rather. So question 17 here. It says uh, Leah gets paid 14, or sorry, 45 an hour plus 150 each week. Now, sometimes, well, let me interrupt myself. I have two blanks because it's something with the 45, something with the 150, and then she's, um, we've got the total. So the total is 690. The keyword for this inequality symbol is at least. At least means 690 is the least amount she wants to make. She really wants to be able to earn more than that. So that's why I've picked greater than or equal to. Now, sometimes people get confused on these rate words because this says an hour and then it says each week. But the problem is only talking about how much she wants to earn in one week. So she's only going to get paid $150 for this problem because it's not like she's working multiple weeks. She is, however, working multiple hours. So that's where I know I'm going to put my rate word, an hour, so $45 X. Then that means X must stand for the number of hours because it's Hour is what follows that rate word. So I did 45x plus 150. All right, let's look at 18. Um, on this one, they give us information about two different moving companies. And it says, after how many hours will the first company be more than, more affordable than the other? So some things to note here. One, I know that we're comparing two companies together. So I did blank compared to blank. It says the first company, it doesn't say what the first company will be more. It says the first company will be more affordable, which really means the cost will be less than the other company. And I actually, there's probably something I need to correct here. If it's more affordable, I don't want it to be equal to. I just want it to be less than. All right, so you may want to cross out that equal to sign. Now, I just read back through the problem to figure out what the information they give me. So it says the first moving company. So that's 800 plus 16 per hour. So per is my rate word. So that's 800 plus 16x. And it says per hour. So x must stand for the number of hours. Did the same thing with the other moving company. 720 plus 21 per hour plus 21x. All right, so let's move on to this last section, which is really just a review section. Remember, 25% up to 25% um, of your test could be about review stuff from last week. So um, this is just solving equations. This should be even be easier than some of the stuff you did at the beginning when you had to do the inequality. So I'm distributing negative 4v minus 40. I added 40 to both sides and got negative 32 and then divided by negative 4. 
If this was an inequality, we would have an issue, but equations are very simple. Um, I'm just going to divide both by negative 4 and get positive 8. Question 20 is a fraction, and you all have been very good about knowing we need to get rid of fractions first. So the first thing I did was multiply both sides by 10. Um, remember, those 10s cancel, which leaves negative 9 plus n, and then I get negative 10 on the other side. And then all I've done here is added 9 to both sides to get n equals negative 1. All right, last page, uh, 21. I distributed first the 4, and when I distributed 4, um, 8n minus 20, right? I noticed right away, so I'm doing two things. I noticed both sides have 8n, which are going to cancel each other out. And then negative 7 and negative 20 make negative 27. Since they're on the same side, I can add them. The other side is just left with negative 27. All right, so I combined these. I was just left with negative 27. I know negative 27 does equal negative 27, which gives me all real numbers as an answer there because that's a true statement. Question 22, so again, I distributed first. Then I um, subtracted 8x from both sides to get 28x. You can add 12 to both sides, or you may just notice that the 12s cancel each other out. Even if you had canceled the 12s in this first step, you still have an x left, which means it can't be no solution. So you're going to get down to a point where you have um, x or something x equals 0, and 0 divided by anything is 0. So that's why I'm getting x equals 0 in the very end. All right, 23 is a doozy. So the first thing I, I did, and I meant to fix this problem before I gave you these copies, was I fixed the problem for you. So um, what is written at the top now is actually what I wanted the original problem to be. Uh, this what's up here in this box. So this one kind of gives you big numbers too, but remember you want to multiply by 8 first since it's the biggest number. So that's what I'm going to do here is multiply every single thing by 8. All right, and then if I do that, I, I am actually cheating just a little bit um, because I do this a different way. So if you had done that, you may have had to use a calculator. That gives me 296 over 4, 248 over 8. Oh, and I didn't actually have to do that one, right? Um, I shouldn't have done that <laughs> because, remember, the whole purpose for that one is that the 8s cancel each other out. So that one actually should just give you 31B equals 24 over 2B plus 72 over 2. <coughs> so the benefit of picking the largest number is that then all of these divide. Again, this 296, you probably wouldn't have recognized that right away, but that is 74 plus 31B, 12 divided, or sorry, 24 divided by 2 is 12, and 72 divided by 2 is 36. All right, so now we're kind of to some easier algebra. Um, so I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. That's how I got 19B. Then I subtracted 74 from both sides. That's how I got negative 38. And then I divided both sides by 12, uh, sorry, by 19, and I got B equals negative 2 because negative divided by a positive is a negative. Whew, last problem. All right. Uh, first thing, got to distribute. Then I noticed, so I did a few things here. I noticed that negative 6x and positive 6x cancel, cancel each other out. I can combine or add negative 15 and 12 because they're on the same side, and I got negative 5. Now that lift leaves me or left me with 0 equals negative 5, which is not a true statement. So 24 is going to give me no solution. Please, please, please come to tutoring if you need help. Um, I have a feeling that we're going to spend the most time in tutoring going over word problems just so you feel really, really good about those before you take your test tomorrow.